Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Today, um, we're going to be taking a look at, again, the general theme is, is that Jesus gives food for faith. And our gospel reading for today and the next two weeks are actually going to focus on Jesus' discourse on the fact that he is the bread of life. And as we take a look at the spirit, at the food that Jesus gives to us, it's interesting to note that as human beings, our focus always tends to be on the physical, isn't it? And it was no different for the people at Jesus' time when he performs this miracle of feeding the 5,000. They latch on to that. They see him as this bread king from the sense of, a, of physical bread. Jesus' emphasis is, is that he came to bring spiritual food. And today, as we focus on the second lesson for today, we want to heed the warning that the Apostle Paul gives to us as he focuses on the Old Testament believers who experienced that manna in the wilderness and did not get the spiritual lesson from the manna and fell away. Those warnings are there for us to be sure that we focus on the right thing when it comes to Christ, and that is the spiritual food that he has to offer to us. So with that in mind, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, today as we have gathered around this spiritual food of the gospel in both word and sacrament today, we pray for rich measure of your spirit, that by his working in our hearts, our faith might be strengthened and our resolve might increase to live our lives to the glory of your name. Let that be true of our worship today as we ask these things in our Savior's name. Amen. Let's begin our worship this morning with our opening hymn, hymn 521. We will sing stanzas one through four. Please rise. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done. And we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all your sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture readings for today are the readings for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. And for our first lesson, we turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 16, beginning at the 15th verse. Again, when the people of Jesus' time experienced this miracle there of the feeding of the 5,000, their thoughts immediately go back to this event in the Old Testament as God provides for his people uh, throughout the wilderness journey. We'll talk a little bit more about this in the message today and what God's purpose was other than just providing for their physical needs. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? Because they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given to you as food to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. All of them are to gather as much of it as they need to eat. You are to take an omer per person based on the number of people each of you has in your tents. The Israelites did this, and some gathered more, some less. When they measured it with an omer, the one who gathered more did not have too much, and the one who gathered less did not have too little. All of them gathered as much as they needed to eat. Moses said to them, no one is to leave any of it till morning. However, they did not listen to Moses. Some of them left part of it until morning, and it became full of worms and stank. So Moses was angry with them. They gathered it each morning. All of them gathered as much as they needed to eat. When the sun grew hot, it melted away. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much food, two omers for each person, and all the leaders of the community came and reported to Moses. He said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow, is a complete rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil, but set aside for yourselves all the rest of it to be kept until morning. So they set it aside until morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, and there were no worms in it. Moses said, Today eat whatever is left over, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find any around the camp. Six days you will gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather it, but they did not find any. The Lord said to Moses, How long will you people refuse to keep my commandments and my instructions? Look, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. 
Therefore, on the sixth day, he will give you two days' worth of bread. All of you are to stay where you are. None of you are to leave your places on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called it manna. It looked like white coriander seed, and it tasted like wafers made with honey. The word of the Lord. Now we turn to our second lesson for today, which will be the focus for our study. It's taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 10th chapter. We read verses 1 through 5 and then verses 11 through 13. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were un, all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. He had them die in the wilderness. All these things that were happening to them had meaning as examples, and they were written down to warn us to whom, to whom the end of the ages has come. So let him who thinks he stands be careful that he does not fall. No testing has overtaken you except ordinary testing. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tested beyond your ability. But when he tests you, he will also bring about the outcome that you are able to bear it. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Please rise for a reading from the Gospels. As I mentioned at the beginning of our worship, we start now a three week series of Jesus' discourse on the fact that He is the bread of life. We begin that by reading from John chapter 6, beginning with verse 24. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I tell you, you are not looking for me because you saw the miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not continue to work for the food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. So they said to him, What should we do to carry out the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. Then they asked him, so what miraculous sign are you going to do that we may see it and believe you? What miraculous sign are you going to perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, just as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I tell you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the real bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said to him, give us this bread all the time. I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. The one who comes to me will never be hungry, and the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. We continue our worship with hymn 857.
Today we give our attention to the words which were our second lesson for today from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians chapter 10. Having read this just a moment ago, I'm just going to reread verse 12 where Paul says to us, giving us this warning, so let him who thinks he stands be careful that he does not fall. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today as we have the privilege of once again gathering around the gospel, we pray for your spirit that he might open our hearts and minds to the truths that Paul gives to us here today, that we might be cautious in our lives and keep our lives focused on that one thing that is needful, your Son, the message of the gospel, through which alone we have eternal life. Let our study bring you glory as we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Recently, I accompanied my family down to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and stayed at the foot of Lookout Mountain. We visited the National Park. The battle took place on the top of the mountain. And at one place, there is kind of like a little museum and numerous pictures. And some of the pictures portrayed Union soldiers up there on the top of this mountain, out on these rocks, situated kind of far out on the ledge. Now, if you're like me, I'm not real fond of heights. And just looking at pictures like that causes this tingling feeling up the back of my legs. And even though there's still pictures, and uh, these are from over 100 years ago, I'm still worried this guy's going to fall off, right? Be careful that you don't fall. Making sure that you don't misstep and fall off a cliff takes a lot of concentration, doesn't it? You got to remain focused on the right thing. You can't allow yourself to get distracted by anything. And you know, it's no different as we go through life when we think about the spiritual journey that we are on as God's people. In our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, we always need to be cautious and to remain focused on the right things. In our gospel reading for this morning, the Jews had become extremely excited. Why? Because Jesus had fed this crowd of over 5,000 people with a handful of food. And immediately their minds go back to the Old Testament where God had provided for his people miraculously during this 40-year wilderness journey. Our first reading for today gave us the background to that, didn't it? The background to that special food, that manna that God gave to them. And even though they showed a lack of faith at that particular time, despite all that God had already done for them in this journey that really had just begun, what was God's response? God's response was, I'm going to provide for you. And I'm going to provide for you every day in a miraculous way. Throughout this entire 40 years that they would wander in the wilderness, God would always see to it that they had everything that they needed for their physical needs. But it wasn't just about physical things, this manna. There was something spiritual about it. God was, going, God was seeking to teach them that they needed to trust him and to take him at his word. As we heard this morning in our Old Testament lesson, you know, not like some of this food we have that'll last for decades because of all the preservatives in them, manna had a very short shelf life. One day. One day. And if any was left over at the end of that day, as we heard this morning, it became rancid. It stank. They didn't listen to God on Friday and gather twice as much, well, they were out of luck. 
because there was no food on the seventh day, because that was the Sabbath day. All of this was to teach them that they needed to trust God. They had to trust that he was going to provide for them every day, that God was never going to fail them. It was more than just meeting their physical needs. The point was is that the manna was to give more to the people than just physical food. It was to engender in them trust and faith in God. In God from whom every good and perfect gift comes. He is the God who would provide for them day after day. But more importantly, it was a picture of the fact that God was going to provide for them a bread that would give them far more than physical life. Eternal life. He was going to provide his son, Jesus Christ. The daily bread that sustained their lives here in the wilderness pointed ahead to the one who would identify himself as the bread of life who gives to us eternal life. And so it is that the people of Jesus' day did not fully understand the meaning of the miracle that Jesus performed and the miracle that God performed in the Old Testament. All they could see was their physical needs being met. And so when they see this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, they just see Jesus as this miracle worker who's going to now put before them all the physical blessings that they would desire. Jesus says something that is shocking that ties this week with the next two Sundays. Who is he? He's the bread of life. He is as necessary and essential for our spiritual survival as eating physical food is for our physical lives. Jesus wants them to understand what is really important in this life. He doesn't want them to be distracted by the miraculous and miss the important part. And that important part was his message. They had come to the other side of the lake looking for what from him? Nothing more than more physical things from him. Things for their body. A list of things that he could do for them to make their life easier. It's kind of interesting, isn't it, that this thinking is so prominent today within our own culture, particularly within the Christian culture. Look at how many false prophets are leading people down a path of seeing Jesus only as the one who can provide us with the physical blessings of life, missing the important part of the message that he is the one who brings to us true spiritual food. He's the one who brings to us what? The gospel that proclaims everything that he has done for us and for our salvation. And that's why Jesus and the gospel reading for today chastises them for only looking to him for something that they could eat physically and to have their fill now here in this world. He warns them not to focus on the food that doesn't last, the food that spoils. But instead, they need to be focused on true spiritual food, food that endures to what? Eternal life. Now, Paul in our text shows us the wonderful blessings that we have received through this spiritual food that Jesus has brought to us as the bread of life. Just as, and it's interesting, he connects us with the Old Testament believers and shows us the spiritual blessings that they received as they were on this wilderness journey. Although Christ was with them during the course of this journey, as we're going to see this morning in the, in the Old Testament, what happened to many of them? They fell away. They rejected this gracious God. God's divine purpose here in recording these things in the Old Testament, and it's, again, just disheartening to think that there are people within Christianity who want to disregard the Old Testament and think that it's a waste of our time. No, these things are here for a very important purpose. It's a warning to us. A warning to us not to fall into the same traps that these people did. In fact, you and I are the culmination of what has been recorded in the Old Testament. We are the goal of this past history that has been recorded. All that the past ages have there to tell us, as it is found there in the Holy Scriptures in the Old Testament, bears fruit in you and me. All these past events would happen and are recorded 
so that we might be the high point of these things. The high point of this instruction, the admonition, and the warnings. So we dare not ignore them. So asking the Holy Spirit this morning to take off the sin that blinds us and to give to us eyesight that can see the truths that, that Paul portrays to us here in this divinely given scripture, we want to take to heart Paul's warning to us. And that warning is this. Be careful not to fall. Be careful. You know, being careful involves having the right information. Being careful involves having the right knowledge. Like us, the people of all generations have been in danger as we live our lives in this world of not heeding the words of the Apostle Paul as he wrote in his great resurrection chapter when he said, Do not be deceived. Keeping bad company corrupts good morals. We need to be careful what we associate ourselves with, what, quote, truths we associate ourselves with. It's interesting that when you go to the first psalm, the first psalm warns us about avoiding three types of people. The first, the ungodly. Who are the ungodly? The ungodly are those who have no room for God in their life. Then there is the unholy. The unholy live as if God doesn't exist. There is no God. And the third group, the unbelieving. The unbelieving mock God and the whole concept of sin. Now, we don't have to look very far around us to see these things being present. Being associated with such individuals is not any good for our spiritual well-being. What they are are Satan's tools and instruments to try to lead us away from God, to lead us away from the truth, and to remove from us the happiness and salvation that can only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Paul says, be careful you don't fall. Be careful that you are not influenced by these things in the world. And so, in order to make this Warning to us, stick, he reminds us of how we are connected with the Old Testament people who fell into these traps. But the first thing he does is he shows us that we share in the same spiritual blessings that they had. He says, For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now every... Israelite knew this story about how God had sent Moses to deliver these Old Testament people from their slavery in Egypt. And in particular, their celebration of the Passover every year, the observance of the Passover, was a reminder to them of how God had delivered them from the angel of death and brought them out of the land of Egypt and given to them, taken them on this journey to the land of, of Canaan. As they miraculously escaped this death in Egypt, they were faced with another death, remember? What was that? Pharaoh and his army. But God spared them from that death as well as he parted the Red Sea. And as they're going through the Red Sea and through this mist, what does Paul say happened? They were baptized into Moses. Now what does this mean? They were baptized, they were connected with this leader. The leader that God had sent them to deliver them from the land of Egypt. This reminds Paul of his baptism. It should remind us of our baptism. In the waters of baptism, who are we bound to? We are bound to a new leader. That leader is the Lord Jesus Christ, who was sent from the Father to do what? To deliver us from our sin, to deliver us from death, to deliver us from the power of Satan, who brought sin and death into the world. What has he given to us? This leader that we are bound to in baptism has given to us life. Life so that we would not die for eternity. What blessings have we received through this baptism? Paul, uh, Peter, in addressing the crowd on Pentecost, says to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For what purpose? For the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
As Paul writes to Titus, he said, God saved us, not by the righteous works that we did ourselves, but because of his mercy. How does he bring this to us? He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. New life, rebirth, forgiveness, salvation. These are the things that God has granted to us in our baptism as we are connected with Jesus. The children of Israel also received other blessings as well as they went on this wilderness journey. Paul goes on to write, he says, They all ate from the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Well, we heard about the spiritual food that they received this morning, right? The manna. And the spiritual drink was the water that God miraculously provided for his people. Both of them were miracles. It's interesting that there's a rabbinical legend that said that a portion of the rock, when God first brought the water out of the rock at Kadesh, actually accompanied, accompanied the children of Israel for 40 years and continued to supply them with the needs of water. Well, Paul corrects that legend. What accompanied them? Who accompanied them? Christ accompanied them. He was the one that provided them with the water that they needed. He provided both the manna and the water. It was Jesus who was providing for them, Jesus who was protecting them, Jesus who was seeing them safely to their new home. And so it is that you and I have a new food and a new drink for the journey that we are now on as we go through this life. A food and a drink that we have the privilege of participating in today. Jesus gives to us what in the Lord's Supper? His body that was given at the cross. His blood that was shed at Calvary. In this meal, he gives to us not only the bread and wine, but his body and blood together with, uh, with and under this, this uh, bread and wine. And in it, he gives to us what? Again, forgiveness of all of our sins. He strengthens us for this journey that we are on and he invigorates us so that we will make this journey safely and eventually do what? Feast with him in a banquet that will never end in his eternal kingdom. With all these blessings that we have, that they had, we would think that everything would just naturally turn out well. Paul says, nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. He had them die in the wilderness. We know that when the children of Israel first had the opportunity to enter into the land of Canaan, they failed. And spies came back and reported all the good things that were there. There was one thing that scared everybody, including the majority of the spies, and that was these people are giants. There's no way that we can take this land. Two men, Joshua and Caleb, they said, don't listen to these guys. We're going to go in. The Lord has given us this land. We should do this. But they listened to the others instead. And so God's punishment was is that everyone 20 and older at that point in time would die in the wilderness during those 40 years that they would journey. Only Joshua and Caleb would be allowed to enter into the promised land. Why did they die? Because of their faithlessness because of their disobedience. And here is our warning. We might partake of the same wonderful blessings that Christ offers, only in the end to be lost. With all the blessings we have in Christ, we too can fail to take Christ at his word in the scriptures. We can take for granted what we have received through the blessing of Christ. Think about it. Think about how many times you and I have found ourselves suddenly listening to the world, following the world, thinking like the world, thinking like the godless people around us. Our flesh is constantly lusting after the things of this world and we end up neglecting what? The one thing that is needful. The bread that does not perish. We can turn from our loving Savior in disobedience and lose the blessings that he gives to us in his grace. 
We can let other priorities slowly but surely creep into our lives and allow us to neglect what? Our gathering together with other believers for the purpose of encouraging one another as we study the scriptures and receive his wonderful blessings in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Paul is saying to us this morning, don't any of you become arrogant. Don't any of you think that can't happen to me. Because what was Solomon's warning in the Old Testament? Pride goes before the fall. We need to approach each day humbly in repentance, keeping our eyes focused on the bread alone that gives eternal life. We don't have any excuses. Paul says all these things that were happening to them had meaning as examples and they were written down to warn us to whom the end of the ages has come. So let him who thinks he stand be careful that he does not fall. No testing has overtaken you except ordinary testing. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tested beyond your ability. But when he tests you, he will also bring about the outcome that you are able to bear it. Paul is saying we don't have any excuses. All this stuff is here written down for us to study as a warning to us. We are to learn what the traps are that the devil sets for us. We need to know the possibilities. And what you and I face is not unique. You know, we can get on this pity party wagon and think we got it worse than everyone else and that, that nobody else has experienced what I've experienced. That's absolutely false. Ever since the fall into sin, these things have been going on and these types of tests have been coming along. It's not unique. What remains constant in the, in the process of all of this to enable us to overcome these temptations is the power that is found alone in the gospel. In the face of all the trials that you and I are going to have to face, in the face of the temptations that we are presented with on a daily basis, we have been given the power to overcome it. It's not found in me. It's not found in my reasoning. It's not found in my strength. It's not found in my feelings. What it is found in is the absolute truth of God's word. A truth that does not change. A truth that remains constant. A power that remains constant. You know, it, it's not like when power usage goes up in the area and all of a sudden the power company has a problem providing us with enough electricity and, and it might kind of wane and they have trouble keeping up. No, God's power never diminishes. It's always there. It's found in the one whom death could not hold. Jesus did not remain dead. He's very much alive. We need to remain focused on his resurrection. Paul would write this in connection with baptism and Jesus' resurrection. He says, We were therefore buried with him by this baptism into his death, so that just as he was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, what may we do? We too would also walk in a new life. For if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be united with him in the likeness of his resurrection. Every day we face the enemies of the gospel that have one intent separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus but as we partake of that bread of life as we continue to focus on the wonderful message of the gospel we can say along with the apostle Paul I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me all things this is the importance of your and my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our relationship with Christ is not about what can he do for me in this world, how much can he give me of this life. No, it's about connecting with the gospel. It's about the power of the Holy Spirit working through that wonderful message that says to us that God loved us when he shouldn't have loved us and he gave us the gift of his only son, who did not shy away from death, but instead faced it head on and he went to the cross and he carried every one of my sins and he has taken each and every one of them away. And even though it looked as if all, all failed and he was a failure, he was weak, that he did not accomplish his purpose, he died, but he rose again, triumphant. 
And in his rising from the dead has declared himself to be God of God, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the one who will come in, in, in the end and destroy all this present world and give to us the kingdom as he intended us to have, a perfect kingdom that will last for eternity. Be careful. Do not fall. Feast every day on the bread of life, namely the Lord Jesus Christ. Grow by the power of the Holy Spirit working through that wonderful message so that you and I can always say every day with the great confidence that there is nothing in creation that will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in making confession of our Christian faith and our loving, gracious, triune God using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as sinful human beings living in this world, we were spiritually starved and spiritually dead. But you have provided for us that one and only food that can give life, and it is your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have nourished our souls through the wonderful message of the gospel and restored in us spiritual life. You have given to us the ability to live to the glory of your name. You have given us the opportunity to share the gospel with the world. We pray that you would help us every day to assess our lives appropriately. Help us to see our priorities in a way that first and foremost, we need to feed our souls. Help us to stay focused on the spiritual things, not allowing this world to distract us so that we might remain on this course that you have placed us in your grace, so that in the end we might join you in your eternal kingdom. Make us mindful that you have provided us with everything that we need, not just physical, but more importantly, spiritually. Empower us to avoid the temptations that come our way, to say no to Satan, to our flesh, and to the world around us, and help us to be bold in sharing this powerful gospel with others. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the positive report that Tonda Morgan has received this week, past week. And we pray that now as she continues her treatments for her cancer, that progress will continue to be made. As each day presents itself, help her to find strength and boldness in the wonderful message of your love found in your Son, Jesus Christ. And help her to be a testament to your faithfulness to those around her. And dear Heavenly Father, tomorrow as our Voters' Assembly meets once again to extend a call to a new shepherd of St. Paul's, we pray that you would work through our Prisidium here in our district um, to present names that will be appropriate candidates uh, for the ministry here and move through our Voters' Assembly to extend the call to that individual that you intend to give consideration to it. To the, the man who receives this call, we pray that you would give to him a rich measure of your Holy Spirit, that he might look at it in a way in which he can best serve you and your kingdom. We entrust everything into your care, confident, Lord, that you always take care of our needs on a day-to-day -day basis in a way that serves us best. All these things we ask in the name of our Savior, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. During the distribution of the Lord's Supper, the congregation will sing hymn 677.
Please rise. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we pray, we give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding banquet, wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. We close today's service with hymn 833.